There's a new app called Figure One. It's, in a nutshell, supposed to be an Instagram for doctors. Pretty much medical pr professionals would be able to uh, use the service to share photos of certain anomalies uh, that have happened while they were treating patients. They could be uh, biological, they could be like an injury. There is actually a gunshot wound uh, hashtag on this Instagram, well not Instagram, on Figure One. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a confusing point for me. I mean, on one hand, this could certainly help uh, enlighten the medical community, help teach, uh, help show other doctors, uh, you know, shared experiences. And this is something that's taught in textbooks too. But on the other hand, it seems like sometimes this service is used in more of a, you know, let's make fun kind of way and let's look at how gross this is. And what about patient uh, confidentiality? Sometimes that seems like lines might be crossed. So where do we, where, where is the balance on this? Well, you made a great point about the confidentiality. I think one of the major concerns is the privacy issue. Mm -hmm. And people are being, you know, tattoos are being removed, birthmarks are being removed, faces are not being shown. But at the end of the day, there are very distinctive features on photos. And if you see your own picture on an app like this... I would be mad. Right. But if you give your consent, which is what should happen, I think, it, you know, first and foremost, even to take the picture, you should be giving your consent, you should be reading your release forms, and you mm -hmm. should be reading what it's going to be used for. But once that line is crossed, once that you have given your consent, this is a tool that could be huge, not just educationally, but just for an awareness of the variants of all these different conditions. You have tumors, rashes, things that... WebMD is now the first place most people go to no, diagnose go themselves. They say I have diabetes every time, no matter <laughs> what. I have a headache and I have diabetes. Yeah. Um, well, I have brain cancer. I mean, I have yeah, I'm, it could be useful. I'm all for this app, honestly. Yeah. I think the privacy concerns need to be addressed more fully. Agreed. But as a entomologist, I have Twitter and Instagram where I'm shooting ideas back and forth. If I see something weird, I will tag somebody who I know knows something about it. I'm helping people with IDs. People are helping me with IDs. We're talking ideas all the time. And it's incredible for me as a scientist to have that. However, doctors don't quite get that because they can't be so open about it. So they're missing this conversation that is really engaging. And, um, you know, I have doctor friends, and a lot of times they will send me pictures that are really But should gross. they be doing that? Well, it's, uh, they're all nature? anonymous and stuff. And so it's, you know, it's, it's part of the conversation. They do it because they know that I'm interested in that kind of thing. And I think that there are, there are places where this is really useful. I've seen the conversations that can come from single images on Twitter amongst scientists. Why can't doctors have the same thing yeah. to allow that kind of voice and allow some levity? It's okay to be, you know, they've got a tough job. I think a little bit of levity in there and a little bit of joking, it's okay. But see, on that, though, I don't agree the joking. Because yeah, the it could comments destroy can come across confidence. As they're insensitive sometimes, and I think there should be someone moderating the comments. So I want to I want to mention that not everyone on this app is a medical professional. Approximately 10% are just regular people, not in the field. People like me, probably, who have no uh, professional uh, need for this. And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily helpful sometimes. It could just be, like, gross out. But like, going back and forth, who's got the grossest thing? Okay, yes, and I think, again, those should be moderated. Even bedside manner should be implemented when doing it, because if you go and I put up a picture, imagine I submit a picture or there's a picture of my arm and there's a rash and someone's like, oh, that's clearly skin cancer. And, you know, that's it. That's, that's all they say. You're like, what? You're shocked. You're seeing all these diagnoses on, I think that's the plural of diagnosis. Right, sure. Diagnoses, sure. Di uh, uh, diagnoses um, on this app that you can get, again, just like with WebMD, you can get confused. But I think that it's also very helpful. If you have something like that um, buildup that we just saw in the image, mm -hmm. there might be other people that you can help by just having that picture out there. So they know what it is. They know there's help. That's a variation of whatever condition that is. I think it could help other people. You know I, I'm for it. I, you know, I don't think that it should be used from random people just submitting photos of themselves. I still, I like this as a purely doctor conversation thing. I think that's where it can be used to its purest form because you should go see a doctor if you have something like that. Agreed. So I think that I don't want, I don't want people relying on the internet too much. And even something like that where people can take photos, all they're going to say is you probably have this, go see a doctor. But... If this can be a ver somehow verify that each of the people on there are indeed doctors and allow it to be a co community and a conversation based upon that, I think a lot of good can come from it. Mm -hmm.
Do you think that outweighs maybe the HIPAA violations? You know, um, there was an example in this article I've read about uh, showing someone with a, a huge fistula, which I think is like an abnormal uh, connectivity thing between her vagina and rectum, and she had she was mentally ill, could not give consent uh, by that measure. You know, there there are some privacy concerns in here. I agree, and I don't I don't necessarily think that's uh, an area that I know very much about. I think HIPAA should be pretty clear. I think. Now that this type of social media and this type of sharing and people texting photos is going on more, mm -hmm. I think they should address it again and just kind of say, okay, how can this, how can images like this ah. still be shared well without violating that kind of thing? Because that image could very well be used in a medical publication. Sure. So if it ends up there, why can't you also just use it a little bit more informally and start a conversation? Well, that's what I was going to say. Anybody can buy a medical textbook and there are pictures just like these. The only new element, and HIPAA has is all over that. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that is different is that this has become a social media, mm -hmm. including the fact that you can see everybody's comments. And this is something that is accessible from your phone. Because if you want to see images of this, all you have to do is, is Google it or go see a textbook. Mm -hmm. And you can still see it. So I don't understand. I get the controversy. I get that it's polarizing. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that people realize that this is not necessarily as new as it seems, because there have been platforms to share this information before. Yeah, and you know what, I don't want to stop the flow of technology either further enabling a spread of information and knowledge and potentially saving people. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a professional like you two. I am a little concerned. I would not like to see my body part in something like that without my consent. Uh, but what do you think, audience? Is figure one, the so-called Instagram for doctors, a good thing or maybe not so much yet? Let us know below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe for more.